welcome to my sewing room. We have such a happy show for you today. It is called Picture Smocking. Why is it a happy show? Well, I think these little clothes will tell you why I just love picture smocking. This is a little girl dress, I think a cute little back to school dress. If you will look at the little figures up above, we have library books up on the shelf and then these little bears are getting ready to read. This is called picture smocking. When you take smocking stitches and make pictures out of smocking stitches. This adorable little girl back to school dress is really precious. Do you see those little Dalmatians on it? I think those Dalmatians are ready to jump on a fire truck since they have a little fire hat. This is what we call picture smocking. This is when you smock and make pictures. Mustn't forget the little boys. Here is a little boy button on the shoulder suit. We used to call those little John John suits. I think they were named because little John Kennedy used to wear suits like this. Well, little John Kennedy is not so little anymore. I know that. Now then, would you look at these cute little dogs right here? I think they're taking a rest for a lazy summer afternoon. This is called picture smocking. Oh, one of my favorite little suits for my little grandsons has been the button-on style. On the front of this little suit, there's a little painter, a little bear painter with a paintbrush, and here the little bear has turned around and has the fuzzy little bear tail because he's painting, oh, he might be painting a fence. This is picture smocking. Now, an easier version of picture, picture smocking is found on this cute little pink jumper. And probably you'll start with an easier version of picture smocking. This particular little design plate, and we call these smocking design plates, has some geometric smocking up at the top and some heart smocking right here, a little heart figure. I didn't forget the little boys in this cute little sh uh, cute little knicker outfit that's our pattern for the series. The little boys, I have taken this and smocked diamonds. Now, isn't that cute? I have invited Kathy McMakin to come to our show and share with you how easy it is to picture smock. Kathy McMakin is construction editor of So Beautiful Magazine and probably the finest picture smocker that I know. Hello, Martha has invited me today to teach you how to do picture smocking. Picture smocking is very fun and very simple. It only contains one smocking stitch, and Martha's already shown you that stitch, and so we're not going to go over that stitch too much, but it's called the cable stitch. What I would like for you to do first is look down and see some of the beautiful smocking plates that we have brought today to show you all about picture smocking. Picture smocking, as you can see, you use all different um, colors of thread to create different designs. And this one is a policeman stopping two cars and with the light up above it, and that's so cute. What I really want you to see is the graph that teaches you how to do um, this particular picture smocking plate is what we call them. So you can see all the different designs in here so that you'll know when to change colors for those specific things. We have um, the car one, and then we have one that has um, dinosaurs, and then we have another cute little one that Martha showed you in the intro with the, the bears and the paintbrushes. Isn't that one so cute? So you can see that these little designs, all we're going to do to create picture smocking is we're going to stack those cable stitches, one cable line on top of another cable line to create these different figures. To get started, we have a very important thing to show you. The first thing that you are going to do is take your, your floss from your skein of floss, and you, you have six strands that, it, that will be in the skein, and we're only going to use four of those strands. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take that strand of floss, and then we are going to separate out four strands. So the way we do that is we hold one in, and we just pick out one strand, and we're going to lay it down. We pull this out. Then we pull out another strand, and we lay it down. And we want to lay down all four strands just like this, you putting the same end toward the toward um, the same ends together. Now this might get a little knotted. 
but all you have to do is give it a tug and all that knotting will come out. After you get four strands together, and we won't spend time threading our needle, you're going to thread your needle and you are going to stack or start with the cable row and start your stacking with this first row of cable stitching. Now I'm going to come in and show you the little simple triangle that we are going to stack today. This is our triangle and you can see that it consists of several rows of cable stitches. Let's count these rows. This is one row, this is a white row, a black row, a white row, a black row, and a white row. You can see that that's five rows of cable stitching. Now, we start with the bottom row of cable stitching. So let's count, we'll find a needle, and we'll count these smocking stitches. So that is a down cable, an up cable, a down cable, then this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That's eleven stitches. Now I've already stitched eleven stitches across the bottom for you. I'm going to spread those stitches out so that you can see what we've done. Now let's count these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That's eleven smocking stitches. We've gone all the way across the fabric, we've taken our needle to the back, and we're ready to put a row of cables right on top of this bottom row. I'm going to come up with my needle right on the side of the pleat. And we're going to come in on the side of the pleat that contains this top stitch right here. And we'll look back at this, and this black stitch right here is the stitch that we are going to do. And we just come up to the side, we will turn our fabric around. So now it looks like we're going to be stitching upside down, right? But we're not. We always stitch just like we read. Okay. And we let that. Those two are going to meet. Then we move over to the next one. We stick our needle in. Okay. And though that stitch will not meet any any other stitch that we've put on there thus far, that's going to that stitch will meet our next row that we put on. And this one is going to meet the row that we just completed. And we want to make sure that we keep all four of those strands of floss completely flat so that we'll take up as much fabric as we can. That is not going to meet anything, but this one mil will meet the row right above it. Okay, and we're just going to continue stitching across, and we'll take another stitch. Okay, so you see how we're just going right across with this same up and down cable stitch, and we are just meeting on that one. And then the next one is our new one that we will meet with our next row of stitching. So do you see how we've just gone straight across the row, just right on top of the row that we've already done. Now we're at the end and we're going to let that stitch meet and then we'll take the thread to the back right where it's coming from and then we're going to turn it around and then we're going to be ready to start again coming up right on the side of the one that we just completed. And if you'll look on this, this is the white row that's right here and this, see how these two meet. This is the one that we're going to do next and we see that this one meets the next one and we take a stitch and we meet here and then we continue on across all the way. You see this next one will meet, so it's a down cable to meet the top cable of the row above. Okay, and we would just continue on across the row and we'll show you what it looks like complete. Do you see how this looks just like our figure? We have all these rows stacked on top of each other to, to complete our triangle. That is a very easy way to do stacking. Stacking is a fun, fun thing. Now Martha has a special doll dress for you that has a picture smocking outfit on.
little dolls like picture smocking too. This is just a sweet, sweet little dress. It's white batiste. It has entredeau and gathered lace trim around the neckline with that little embroidery floss run through it so you can see a little touch of blue. And then this sweet little blue bow with little rosebuds that come out to the side. Notice that tiny little piping there. That's a little bit of a trick I'd like to share with you right now. When doing any smock dress, doll dress, uh, doll dress or, or child's dress, let me show you what I'm using here. I'm using a pull-off wash away basting tape. Now after I pulled off that strip it leaves an almost uh, like a little glue strip. Okay, in order to get this piping perfectly in place I'm going to glue it down right at the top of the smocking so it will be absolutely perfect. I don't think I have it exactly straight there but almost. And then to, in order to finish the dress I will take the yoke, place it right here have a little pin across there. You see I've glued that piping in place so that will hold it perfectly in place. Therefore, when I stitch along there, that baby piping will be exactly where it's supposed to be and I just kind of glued it down to begin with. The other treatment on this little doll dress, which I love so much, let me hold this open, you can see it better down here. You see I have put the entredeau and gathered lace edging and then I have taken a needle and simply threaded three rows of embroidery floss and gone over and under and over and under and I just think that is the nicest little detail, especially for doll clothes which are so small, those little details really do make the difference. So that's a little trick for piping. You just glue it down. I'm a big believer in glue anytime you can use it. And a special little trim around the neck of this doll dress. Next, I have a really pretty quilt square for you, which also has picture smocking. Picture smocking can even be beautiful in a quilt square. Here you see the three hearts with some wonderful geometric up above it. What I want to share with you is how easy it is to make an insert into this quilt square. Okay, let me uncover here. First of all, I either baste down or glue down like I just showed you the piping. Then I put a strip on this side, stitch it down, open it up. Strip on this side, stitch it down, open it up. Then to finish out the quilt square, I put this piece right here and stitch as closely as I can to the piping. Let me see if I can open it up and just show you then. It will look like this and therefore I have created my square with my little smocked and piped inset. Now see how easy that is to do. Next I have a home decorating project for you, a pretty pillow that also has some picture smocking. This pillow I think is a gift of a lifetime and especially wonderful to give to a little baby and it has a little picture smocked uh, bear right in the middle. Very easy to make and I'm going to share with you right now just how easy it is. First of all, as you can see right here, you do your picture smocking and then simply stitch all the way around it, straight stitching to stitch it to the pillow. Now then, you're going to put your, this is Swiss beading which has the entredeau uh, seam allowance still on it. You've got to come in here and trim away that seam allowance before you zigzag all of these pieces of beading which I have already run the ribbon through it. Now, let me just share with you that I usually zigzag that. I guess you could do some straight stitching, but I kind of think zigzag is easier and I am attempting to go into one hole of the entredeau and off on the edge of the fabric. Now, can I do it all the time? No, no sewing machine in the world is set exactly to go into one hole of entredeau. But I am attempting to go into one hole and now then I'm going to just stitch right down on top of the picture smocking because you remember it's already been stitched right down to my fabric so it's not going to go anywhere and then I simply zigzag all of these pieces and I go right over those other pieces through all of those layers and I'm going to come down here and finish zigzagging all the way down and now then that is how you finish all the layers by putting the um, uh, Swiss uh, hand loom, uh, not hand loom, the Swiss beading, I'm sorry. Now let me show you how to finish constructing the pillow. After all of this, oh you see my little music box is already singing. <laughs> After all of this uh, 
beading is stitched down. See how pretty that is now. The next step is going to be to gather Swiss eyelet or American eyelet, either one, to gather it and turn it in. Okay, then I put the outside or the back side of the pillow down. I've already put both of these together and there's a little buttonhole in there and I bet you know what the buttonhole's for. That is for the little music box handle to stick out. Okay, right sides to right sides. Then I stitch all the way around, then turn it right side out. And I have my little pillow that I have made and you can put any little music box uh, uh, song in there that you want to. I insert my little pillow with the music box in the pillow and sure enough, this is exactly what we end up with. I really believe that's one of the sweetest baby gifts that I've ever seen. As a matter of fact, one of the first handmade items that Joanna ever received was a little smocked pillow like this with a little music box and it played Brahms Lullaby and I thought it was the absolute sweetest gift that she had ever gotten when she was a little baby. And you know what? That pillow is just as sweet today and it still sits on her bed. Well, I, I could turn this and play another little tune, and then we'd really have music, wouldn't we? But isn't that the sweetest little baby gift? I have a really special treat for you next. Kathy Brower will be here to teach you the concertina rose using everybody's favorite silk ribbon. I am so pleased to have as my guest today Kathy Brower. Kathy is senior editor of So Beautiful magazine and does she evermore have a beautiful silk ribbon stitch to share with you. Welcome to the show Kathy. Thank you Martha. Today I'm actually going to show you something other than a stitch. It's a silk ribbon manipulation. I've shown you a couple of these on different segments. This one's called the concertina rose and uh, you'll understand when, once you see it because it looks a little bit like a, an accordion. So we'll get started. I want to show you the little uh, project that we did to show you the concertina rose. Um, this was a purchased embroidered handkerchief that has been folded in to make an envelope for a Valentine or a Mother's Day card. This one has a stitched on little charm that says mother and you can buy these little charms at any craft store and you can either glue them on or sew them on. This would be a great one for a Valentine. But I thought that was a cute little project to do. First of all you make these by hand and then you tack them on or glue them onto your project and then you add your little Japanese ribbon stitch leaves. This is a finished concertina rose and you'll want to leave a couple of tails on the end so that you can use these tails to stitch them into your project. You can pull these through and tie them on the back side or you can cut them off and stitch them directly onto your project or glue them. Now here's the trick to it. You would take a ribbon, a piece about a foot long. You'll start in the center and you'll fold this at an angle and you'll start folding back and forth, back and forth like you did. Remember when you used to have to decorate for prom committee and you'd fold crepe paper like this or when you were in kindergarten you'd fold construction paper like this and make little little projects and hanging across the room. You see what I'm doing? I'm just folding this back and forth, back and forth and I'm going to do this. It takes a little more folds for bigger ribbons. You can use small ribbons and you can use larger ribbons. Any size ribbon will work. I think a two millimeter might be a little too small, but if you've got tiny hands and you've got the patience, you can try it. So How wide is that one, Kathy? This one is a 13 millimeter. It's the one between seven and 32. Seven millimeter will work, will work also. But I wanted to use this large one. As you see, I've just folded it back and forth and back and forth. Okay, now here's the tricky part. What you want to do is hold the last fold. See where these two fold together? I'm going to let that go so you'll see. And I'm going to hold that fold with my thumb. And as you see, there's an accordion here. And I'm going to gently, let me hold this between two fingers. I'm going to gently pull this other, this is the tricky part. I hope I can do this. Gently pull this other one until it all folds in on itself. And so you see it forms a beautiful rose. And I hold that between my fingers and I'll turn it over. And you can smush it, see? I smush it with my thumb and it bounces back. And you'll pin it. Let me throw a pin in there. And then what you'll want to do is take a needle and thread and take a couple of tack stitches through all the layers. 
I'd take about four or five tack stitches all together and then clip off your tails. Now if you want to stitch this through your project, leave your tails. If you don't want to stitch through the project, wind your thread around this to secure it, cut it off, and then you can tack it onto your project. And that's how easy it is. Just a little, takes a little uh, coordination with your fingers, but it's a fun stitch to do. You know what? I would almost call that the magic rose. Okay. Oh, that was just fascinating, <laughs> Kathy. Thank you so much. Now, for our craft for you today, we have a really cute light switch cover for that special child in your life. This little simple and easy craft is one to make for the favorite little boy in your life. This is nothing in the world but a little light switch cover that has a train and a railroad track glued to it. Now isn't that cute for your little boy's room? You talk about easy to make. Here's the light switch cover. Then you need to get a little bit of green fabric. Just simply wrap it around it, glue it in. Then after you glue the green fabric to your light switch cover, here is a little railroad track. Glue that down. Here is a little train. Now let's see if I'll probably just turn it upside down here. There's a little train. Of course, you have to cut out where your light switch will come, you know, where your little flicker will come in and out. And that is absolutely all there is to making a really special craft for the little boy in your life. Won't you come along with me to my attic where I have a beautiful, beautiful antique garment to share with you. Sometimes in antique clothing, as in clothing that you're going to make and I'm going to make, simplicity makes the most exciting statement. This little turn of the century dropped waist dress has a little bit of embroidery on the yoke, on the high yoke, and that is absolutely, well, not the only trim. I started to say absolutely the only trim. There is a little bit of lace on the cuff on the sleeve, and there's just a sweet little uh, strip that goes around the lower waist and then a simple little hem. That's absolutely all there is to that beautiful little dress, utter simplicity. My letter for Sewing from the Heart today is from Mary Ann Reed of Houston, Texas. And Mary Ann writes, A few months ago, my daughter-in-law asked me to help her bring a lesson to her fifth grade Sunday school class at Memorial Drive Presbyterian Church in Houston. The lesson was to be on the Holy Spirit. The lesson materials referred to the Holy Spirit as a comforter and suggested making a small comforter. We sent a flyer home with the students the Sunday before the project would begin, asking them to bring to class the following Sunday any fabric that had meaning for them, any scrap of fabric that had somehow brought them comfort, and so forth and so on. After this short lesson on the Holy Spirit, we started working on our squares. The class consisted of both boys and girls and male and female teachers, all participated even our male teachers. Most had had no stitching experience. We demonstrated some simple embroidery stitches but did not require any formal stitches. They did not need to fear any failure because they were free to use any stitches that they wanted to make up. Any mistake was no mistake. In other words, everything was just perfect. They were free to invent new stitches. We made no restrictions on the fabrics and no restrictions on what they felt brought them comfort. Nothing was ripped out. We were able to finish the project for the annual art show at the church and the students proudly participated in the show as artists in their own right. They were honored at the artist's reception and treated with due respect. What a lovely project, Mary Ann, for you people down in Houston. And other places, too, I might add, might want to complete a project like this. Thank you so much for joining me in my sewing room today, and I'd like to invite you to be with us next time.